So uh, today, real quick, we uh, class title. Uh, no, no, I don't need that. No, no. All right, there we go. Check, check. Uh, it's gonna be called seek counsel or destroy thyself. Seek counsel or destroy thyself. This is gonna be for new brothers coming in, new sisters coming in, uh, brothers that's been here, older brothers, older sisters, sisters that are in the process of proving a brother, brothers in the, that got the thought of wanting to prove a sister. You know, we can all learn from this. All right, 2 Timothy 3.16, let's start out there. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now we all know this scripture. We know, I always know it like the back of my hand. We don't heard it. All scripture is profitable for reproof. We use it all the time when uh, Christians want to nitpick and cherry pick out the Bible, use what they want. But uh, this also is applied to every single one of us in here. All the scriptures is given by inspiration of God. And the scriptures talk about seeking counsel in different situations. We hear that, but we don't apply it at all. We hear it, but we will not apply it at all. Because when it comes time for seeking counsel, what we do, we do our own thing. We do our own thing, and then when the when it gets thrown back in our face, the repercussions of the choices we made now are badly. I need some counsel. Can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, I've been going through some things. What you going through? Oh man, just that and the other. Well, it's my first time hearing about it. I didn't even know you was going through that. Yeah, I know. You didn't see counsel. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, and correction. Read verse 17. That the man of God may be perfect. So the reason why all these scriptures is profitable to our life, that we may be perfect. In other words, saying perfect is complete in every area of our life. So we're not lacking in nothing. Where when we uh, stand before Christ, where we who we have to measure up to, He can measure us, and then we we here in all measures of our life. We ain't lacking here. Well, I did good with not eating pork, but that envy and jealousy and hatred I had. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was down here with that. Yeah. Oh, keep the Sabbath day. I was here. I was good with that, but uh, yeah, though when it came to controlling my mouth, oh, I was here. Right. No, that's why it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Verse 17 again. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 17. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Thoroughly furnished because you're going to have to go through the fire. You're going to be tried. The Most High didn't write down these scriptures just to make you feel good whenever you read them. He wrote it down because this is what you're going to have to go through. You're going to have to go through the trial and the, trip, the temptations of every scripture written in here. That's why we read over and over again. Uh, when I come to seek the Lord, uh, what does that say? I come to do what? Prepare thy soul. Prepare thy soul. Exactly right. Because all these scriptures written in here, you're going to have to be, you're going to be tested up against them. Every single one of us. So don't think you're going to escape it somehow. You're going to have to be tested by these things. That's how he purged you. Um, go to the scripture of Leviticus 18. All these scriptures is for the inspiration uh, inspiration of God that we may be perfect and reproof and correction. What are we supposed to do? Leviticus 18 verse 4. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 4. Ye shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances. Brothers, by show of hands, new brother, what is ordinance? What is an ordinance? I want another name for ordinance. I want to make sure you know what we read and you understand what we read. I need a new brother to raise his hand. New meaning you've been here six months and under. All right. Jeremiah. 
Yeah, one brother, 4,000. Ordinances on first Peter's 4.11? No, 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 no. I asked you a question. What is another word for ordinance? Uh, Eliab, let's see what you got. Order. No. Elijah, Ephraim, y'all got microphones in those aisles? Yep. Pass those microphones down to the brother in your aisle. Make sure they turn on. Elijah, Ephraim, right here. Check, check. Just leave it on too when you get it. Go ahead. Ordinance is a law. Law. Glad I asked that question. So it says, ye shall do my judgments. And those judgments come from what? They come from the laws. Because every law got a judgment behind it. And keep my ordinances. Read on. To walk therein. Uh -huh. I am the Lord your God. Read on. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments. Which if a man do, he shall live in them. He shall live by my laws, statutes, and judgments. Live by them. Meaning that when you embark on something, you get a thought in your mind and you want to go do something. Well, it's a law for it. There's some wisdom somewhere in the Bible that you can read back on and say, hmm, okay. I've seen they did this, they did that. Let me do this too. That's how you live in the laws of God. This is your life. You are engulfed in it. You don't wake up and then it's my will. Christ didn't roll like that. Christ said, thy will be done. What we do is, because, you know, we've been living our whole life as I do what I want to do. We wake up, what do I want to do? Mm -hmm. And then if, it, if I think it goes outside of the Bible, I look then. Right. No, that's the opposite way. Read verse 5 again. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 5. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. This is your life. This engulfs your life. Give me that in um, Romans 12 and 2. This is where it starts. That thought of living in God's laws, this being your every single breath, your every single thought. It's got to start here, Romans 12 and 2. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. Because this world tells you to live freely. Do what you want to do. Do whatever makes you feel good. What makes you happy at the end of the day. You just go ahead and do it. Because only God can judge you. Right. Read on. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the, the scriptures, God saying, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Put away that old thinking that you had. Not seeking counsel is what got us into the situation that we in as a people now. We keep marching around the same old damn tree, voting for presidents, governors, mayors, whatever the hell you want to call it, police chiefs. We ain't sought the counsel of the Lord. We trying to do our own thing. What's that, what I say all the time? Uh, we looking for uh, worldly solutions for spiritual problems. Yeah. That's what we keep doing. We ain't transformed our mind to follow the law, statutes, to live in the law, statutes, and judgments of God. Read that again. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, uh -huh. that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So once your mind reforms, to, to live in the laws of God, what happens is other people see you done change your life. Now they see you don't act on your emotions right. no more. Oh, he used to be that dude. You say something to him, he far off. Right. But now your minds be reformed and the scriptures is what you live by. You know you don't do that now. You examine every matter. You've had counsel on this kind of thing before. Right. So now I don't do those same things I used to do. And people that see that, they come back and they glorify the Lord. If they are called by Christ. Because Christ said, my sheep hear my voice. And another they will not follow. Give me that in uh, John now. Go to John. Go to John. I think it's in 21 is what I want. 21.15. So what's our job, brothers? What's our job when it comes to that? Since we got to live by every word is profitable for reproof and all those things. What do we got to do? John 21 verse 15. John chapter 21 and verse 15. So when they had done, 
Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. Mm -hmm. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. With knowledge, wisdom, understanding, counsel. All of these things is we supposed to feed the sheep of God with. Because they we all coming from different walks of life out there. And we all need to talk to somebody that got the wisdom of God that we can help each other through whatever situation we in. So what are we supposed to feed them with, brother? What's the precept? We supposed to what are we supposed to feed the sheep of God with? Uh Zashe, let's see what you got. What are we what are we supposed to feed the lost sheep of the house of Israel with? Are we supposed to start up a uh a food land, give out canned food, or we supposed to go out on the bus station with the bums, or the homeless, I ain't gonna call them bums, sorry. The homeless, and feed them some hot meals on Saturday like they be doing when we out there, what we do? Sir, this is the book of Matthew. No, I'm gonna stop you already, sit down. Uh, Yehoshua, what we got? Is it Yoshua or Yehoshua? Yeshua. Yeshua, okay. Got a few different versions in here. Yeah, Yeshua, okay. What we feeding them with? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's somewhere around there, but not that ain't what I want. Uh, Brother Lucius. The book of Amos, chapter 5, chapter 8, and verse 5. No, no. Uh, Brother Daniel. What we feeding them with? This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter no. 3. All right, uh, brother Isaac. Let's try Northern Kingdom. Let's see what we got. Malachi two seven. Malachi what? Two seven. Oh, okay, we we are, uh, we getting there, but not the right one. Let's see what you got, soldier Yuri, on the back. Say it loud, proud. Uh, first two and two. No, we already called that. Oh, okay. I'm about to cut a lot of this out on YouTube. <laughs> Did you already answer, brother Sam? Okay, brother Sam, let's see what you got. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. There we go. Let's pull it. All right. What tribe are you from? Levi. All right, Levi. He saved y'all because a few of y'all was wrong. Jeremiah. No, we got it. Jeremiah 3 15. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. With what? With knowledge and understanding. And what's the knowledge that we, who said it out there? What's the knowledge? Was somebody, was it Brother Isaac? What was that knowledge? What was the precept for that? Malachi 2 and 7. Malachi 2 and 7 is the precept for the knowledge that we are supposed to feed our people with. That they are coming out of the world with, from all different walks. Egyptology, Buddhism, we had a brother that was Buddhist today. His daddy was a slave in New England, but somehow he's a Buddhist. Sisters that are coming out of that promiscuous lifestyle. If I said a promiscuous lifestyle. Brothers that are coming out of being whoremonger lifestyle. On drugs. We got to feed them with the knowledge and understanding of God's words. That means that you have to counsel them. Got to be able to counsel them. That's the next level of, of leadership when you can go into the God's word and give your brothers and sisters counsel on the situation that they in. But first you got to start out with the sincere milk. First Peter 2 and 2, I think one of you brothers said. So how did God set up the pastors to feed his people? Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 1. How did God set that up? He set up order. Deuteronomy 1, uh, let's read verse 15. How did he do that? Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 15. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men, and knowing, 
and made them heads over you. So the first thing God did, he said, I took wise men. He didn't take just foolish men. He didn't take, God didn't take entertainers. Right. He didn't take Wendy Williams. He didn't take people that had talk wow. shows. He didn't take linebackers like Ray Lewis. He didn't take running backs like Jim Brown. Those ain't wise men to God. But those are the people that we seek counsel from as a people. Thus, that's why we on the bottom of the totem pole. Listen to damn linebackers. <laughs> Not prophets. Right. Linebackers, entertainers. That's who we taking counsel from. Wendy Williams. Crazy. Oprah Winfrey. That's who we take care of. Read that thing again. Verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 15. So I took the chief of your tribes. Wise men. Wise men. What makes us wise, brothers? I need a precept. I need a precept. And what makes us wise? What, what is, it? is it? Is it that we learned a lot in school? Because in the world, your wisdom's based off how many degrees you got. In the world, it's based off how many gray hairs you got, how long you've been living, how many places you done traveled. Oh, I've been to England, I've been to Israel, I've been to, uh, where else I've been? I, I've been to the Cayman Islands, uh, oh, I've been to uh, Standing Rock, I've been everywhere. I have seen it all. Naeem, what makes us wise? Oh, that's the beginning of wisdom, but that ain't what makes us wise. Uh, Soldier Tobias, you had your hands up. Speak up. Deuteronomy 4 6. Okay, I'll take that. That ain't what I'm looking for. Uh, let me get a mirror. Brother Amir, let's see what you got. Mm, you can use that, but that ain't. Uh, I can't say it. JT, is that for sure? Okay, okay, we'll say that. Okay, JT, what you got? Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. Uh, that's if you with wise men, right? Ain't that what they say? Yes, no, no, we don't want that yet. Uh, one more here. Soldier as a rider. Let's see what you got. No, we ain't taking it. Go to 2 Timothy. Uh, for for time's sake, I, I can't, I can't add all of y'all. 2 Timothy 3.15. One verse above. What makes us wise? Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. 3 and 15. 3 15. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. And that from a child that has known the Holy Scripture. The what? The Holy Scriptures. Uh -huh. Which are able to make thee wise. The Holy Scriptures do what? Which are able to make thee wise. That's what makes us wise. <laughs> Is the holy scriptures of God. It's not how much that we learned before we came in here. So no matter what your age is, no matter how many gray hairs you got, how many degrees you got, you ain't wise in the eyes of God. If you ain't keeping the commandments of God, you just a, a grown ass boy. Where would I go to prove that? Because that's a that's a hard statement for some people to understand. You tell an old man got gray hairs, he's 52 years old, he done been to uh Egypt. World War II. He'd be a little older than that, but <laughs> and I walk up on to no, that's wrong, according to the Bible. The hell you know, young man. Hilarious. Mm -hmm. Where would I go to prove that? That I, if I told him, I said, you sir, you just a old boy. Let's see. Let's see what that says. Let's see what it says. That ain't what I what what I got in mind. But we'll see what it says. Let's see what it says. Sirach. Okay. Sirach, chapter forty-two and verse eight. Be not ashamed to inform the unwise and foolish. No, no, that ain't what that ain't what we need. Uh, brothers of Doc, where would that go? Uh, you go to First Kings chapter two. That's right. Let's go to that real quick. So we know that the scriptures is what makes us wise. So let's see what makes us a wise man in the eyes of God. Let's put those two together. 1 Kings 2, verse 2. 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 2. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, 
And shoot thyself a man. Show yourself a man. Read on. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. What is that? To walk in his ways. To keep his statutes and his commandments. And his what? And his commandments. His laws, statutes, and commandments is how you show yourself a man to God. Why would God say, why would he put that in the Bible that being a man, it goes hand in hand with the commandments? Let's see who's thinking out there. Is any brother thinking? Let's see. I'm going to see. If any light bulbs pop up. Bing, 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 bing. Brother Lucius, he's going to take a stab. Let's see. Uh, because, you know, like in Titus, it tells you how to run your house and it teaches you how to raise your children, your, how to... How to lead, be a leader in your house. Okay, leader, okay. You, you close. You at the stove. Brother Pagiel. Let's see if we can turn it on. <laughs> because the laws help you grow. And that's the okay. sincere milk that makes you strong man. Okay, the laws do help us grow. Uh, Brother Azariah, let's see what you got. Uh, it will help you um, have your emotional man and seek counsel um, throughout your emotions. Okay. Okay, he's thinking. I like it. I like it. I like that answer. JT, let's see what you got. Um, Joshua chapter 1, verse 7. 7, that says, uh, meditate on the law of the Lord, right? No, it's talking about, then you shall prosper. Brother Judah, why would God say keep his commandments is what show yourself a man? Because the commandments is what converts the soul. Psalm 19. Uh, no, no. Yayo, yeah, what you got? Uh, see, give me ah, there we go. That brother's thinking. The commandments of God require discipline. That's what makes you a man. You don't act on your impulses. You don't do what you want to do. Because the word of God, the commandments that make us wise, is something in there that tells you how to guide your life where you don't go off and do your own thing. And, and far too many times, us as a people, we do what we want to do like kids. Whenever they feel like do, they, they hungry, they feel like they're hungry, let me cry. That is what? That's instincts. That's emotions. Oh, he hurt my feelings. Oh, let me cry. Oh, mama won't buy me no toy. My feelings is hurt. Let me cry. I can't go over here and spend the night like I want to. Let me cry. That's what kids do. But if you keep the commandments of God, it requires discipline. That what makes you a man in the eyes of God. That's why, if you don't keep these commandments in the eyes of God, you're a grown-ass boy. That ain't wise at all, because you don't know the scriptures. So that ain't who he's setting up to feed his people with knowledge and understanding. Go back to Deuteronomy, chapter 1. Deuteronomy, chapter 1, and verse 15. So I took the chief of your tribe. The chief of your tribe. The, the top man. Wise men and knowing. Wise man and knowing. Wise man that understood the scriptures. That can go in and pull things out. Extract things from the scriptures. That study to show thyself approved. That knew where all the books of the Bible were. <laughs> Yeah, throw that in a little salt in the Rito. And made them heads over you. Heads means leaders. Captains over thousands. Mm -hmm. And captains over hundreds. Uh, captain Shem is a captain of a thousand. Uh, what does it say? Captains of hundreds? Yes, uh, captain Isis, captain of 200. Captain Robbins, a captain of 100. Rito. And captains over 50. Well, we've got officers of 50, officers of 80, officers of 90. Rito. And captains over 10. Uh huh. And officers among your tribe. Rito. And I charge your judges. And he gave them a disposition. This is your role as a leader, as a wise man of the people, this is your charge. Read on. At that time, saying, hear the causes between your brethren. Hold on, hear the what? Causes between your brethren. What is another way to say causes? Brother Isaac. Conflict. Conflict, okay. Uh, brother Amir. Issues. Issues, y'all saying, y'all y'all around there. Uh, brother Daniel. Problems. Problems. JT, stand up. I can't hear you. Alt between your brother. Alt. Uh, make it plain for people out there on the streets. Yeah, you got an alt between your brother. What the hell? They go keyboard. <laughs> Control alt to me. <laughs> brother Shield. Sin transgression. Oh. Uh, all right, Gerald Ham. 
temptation. No. What's the? Remember, precept goes upon precept. All right. Hilas. Your needs. Your needs. Let's read that again. Let's read sixteen again. Deuteronomy chapter one and verse sixteen. And I charge your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously. So you hear the causes. What's the cause? Counsels. Between your brethren. Hear the counsels that they might have, whatever y'all, all this stuff, temptations, all that. Let's counsel. Hear the counsels between your brethren. And what you're supposed to do. Hear the causes between your brethren. And judge righteously. And you judge righteously according to what? How do we judge righteously when we counseling the causes of our brothers and sisters? How do we judge righteously? Come on, I need new hands. Naeem, come on, take a stab. Whatever you might know. I need to know. Using the Bible, Using the Bible right? But this ain't Christianity. We, <laughs> we need a precept for that. Brother Samuel. Uh, Leviticus chapter 19 verse 15. What it say? Ye shall do no unrighteous in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the but in righteous shalt thou judge thy, thy Okay, that, that says in righteous. I need to know how do we judge righteously? What 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 is it we use? It's something uh brother Brother Lucius. The book of Ezra, chapter 7 and verse 25. No, 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 no. Uh, go to Psalms 119, 172, I think it is. Hold your finger in here. Might turn into a long... 119, 172, I think. Let me check. Yep. Precept is... Go ahead. Psalms, chapter 119, verse 172. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. All thy what? All thy commandments are righteousness. So that's how we judge righteously between each other. When you hear the causes, the counsels between your brethren. If a brother comes up to me and he got an alt between his brother, that man feel like his dude got something against me. He always saying something slick. Right. That's his cause between him. So I need to counsel between these brothers. So now do I say, well, let me hear what you got to say, and I'll see if it's really that bad, or if you just being emotional based on my opinion because of the way I was raised. Well, my daddy didn't raise me like that. Why are you so sensitive, man? The dude's playing with you. No. And he said, and judge righteously using his commandments between every brother. Right. So it's not your opinion, it's not your emotions, it's not how you was raised. Because some of us was raised a little harder than others. We grew up in different lives. Some of us grew up in Haiti. Right. Some of us grew up here in America where we was fed by you know, the serpent. But in, in Haiti, you had to get it how you live. You know, the land of Jamaica, where Benjamin is, you, you live different lifestyles than Judah has over here. That's why I do commend you, um, you island tribes. I do commend y'all. Do y'all about y'all business? I like that. I like that. Uh, read that again. Deuteronomy. Yeah, one and sixteen. Deuteronomy chapter one and verse sixteen. And I charge and I charge your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with, with him. So in, within that, that's counsel taking place right there. You've got a brother here, you've got a brother here, and, and you here in the middle have God's commandments and his words using your wisdom to judge righteously between these two. Right? So uh, go to, uh, here, uh, here's where it is, Sirach 44 and 4. Remember, he set them up, right? Set them up. Set them up. Establish the order for us as a nation. This is our heritage. Sirach, chapter 44 and verse 4. Leaders of the people by their counsel. What are we? Leaders of the people by their counsel. You are leaders of the people by your counsels. That's why you have to know what you're talking about when people come to you with situational problems. 
gotta know what you're talking about because you can give wrong counsel to call somebody commit suicide because you couldn't find the scriptures on depression. You can call somebody to go out there and fornicate because you didn't know the scriptures on fornication. But you're supposed to be leaders of the people. Read on. By their what? Leaders of the people. By their counsels. You were set up from the beginning to lead the people by your counsels. Read on. And by their knowledge of learning, meet for the people. By the knowledge of learning. That's why it says in Romans 15 and 4, everything written aforetime is written for our what, brothers? Learning. learning. Read on. And by their knowledge of learning, meet for the people. Uh -huh. Wise and eloquent are their instructions. Wise and eloquent. Why would their counsel be wise, brother? Why? Why would it be wise? I want you to... Zashay, let's see what you got. Why would it be wise? Because their counsel will be from the Bible, the words of God. Right, from the words of God. From the scriptures is what it says in 2 Timothy 3.15. That's why that would be wise, and that's why it would be, that's why it says, by their knowledge of learning, meet, which means good for the people. Because they're wise, their wisdom is coming from using the scriptures, applying the commandments, and it's eloquent. They know how to put it out to you. Some people need to hear that thing rough. Some people need to, you, what they say, what's that word they say in the world thing where you put it in the food, put the medicine in the food and they go home and eat it later? Things like that. Is that, what, is that right? Is that how it is? Yeah, it is. It, I guess it must be a Kentucky thing. <laughs> but you can't, some people can't take it straight up right in their face. They get offended. Like Christ. What did Christ do? He, he taught them by parables. So when they went and thought about it, oh, now I know what he was talking about. Right. Same thing with us. Sometimes you have to, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know, I guess it's wrong. No, I thought it was put the medicine in the food, they go home and eat it later. Uh, <laughs> I guess it ain't right. Yeah. All right, I guess it ain't right. Uh, Matthew 23 and 11. I'm going to find that thing too. Somebody Google that. Sayings of Negroes. <laughs> Matthew 23 uh, verse 11 Matthew so chapter, if he set us up to be leaders of the people read that Matthew chapter 23 and verse 11 uh -huh. but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant he that is the leader that is among you the leaders among you must be servants we don't have his wisdom, the knowledge of the understanding of the Bible for ourselves is meant to give it to the people. Freely you have received, freely you shall what? Yeah. Give. So our job is once we learn this thing to be service, to counsel our people out of the situations that they in. That is what we're supposed to do. Go to Ezekiel chapter 3. Now let's flip the coin. That was all the feel good scriptures. Yeah, Ezekiel chapter 3 on verse 7. I think that's what it is. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 7. But the house of Israel would not hearken unto thee. Oh, no, they won't do what? They would not hearken unto but thee. But the house of Israel, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you will not listen to nobody. You won't listen to the counsel that's given to you. You go and do your own thing. Then you get caught up. Now you won't counsel. Mm -hmm. When you should have did that in the first place. God said what? The house of Israel would not hearken unto thee. They won't listen to you. Read on. For they would not hearken unto me. They won't listen to God. Where is God talking to our people at? Through the Bible. In the Bible. I got one person that know that. God is talking to us in the Bible. And he got... Scriptures on uh, getting counsel all throughout the Bible. But we'll skip over that. We'll skip right over that if that don't fit into our agenda. If we, if it, if it's going to cause me to slow down from what I want, what I'm trying to get, nah, I ain't seeking no counsel on that thing. I done thought it out. I've been thinking hard on it with who? Myself. Oh, shit. Read it again. 
Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 7. But the house of Israel would not hearken unto thee, for they would not, for they would not hearken unto me. You won't even listen to God. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard, you and hard hearted. Hard headed Negroes is what God is saying. Hard headed. How many times do you have to go through the same thing in your life before you just seek counsel? How many times you got to get dogged out as a sister, used and abused before you ask somebody, what should I look for in a man? How many times as a Negro do you have to get locked up before you ask somebody, man, show me how to be a man. What am I doing wrong? Oh, we don't do that. We hard headed. Go to Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel 33. Hard headed got us on the other side of the earth. Serving captivity. Serving your enemy. Waking up long hours. Going through the same thing over and over again in your life. Wondering why you keep finding all the bad dudes. Read that. Ezekiel 33 and 30. Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 30. Also Thou, son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another. So when you try to give your people some counsel, they think it as you trying to tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this nigga try to tell me what to do. I'm grown. Can't nobody tell me what to do. Right in the house talking about you. And all you're trying to do is help them out. They don't see it that way. Read on. And speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they came, and they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people. Mm -hmm. And they hear thy words, but they will not do them. They do what? But they will not do them. So it said, now listen to this, he ain't talking about the people out there. He ain't talking to them. He's talking about the people that come in here and do what? It says, sit before thee as my people. He ain't talking about them out there that don't know who they are. He's talking about his people that do know, that come in here and sit and hear the words of God all the time. But God said they what? But, but they, they would not do they this. They won't seek no counsel at all. No, 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 no. They'll go and prove somebody secretly. They won't tell you until it's too late. They'll, they'll, they'll uh, disappear from uh, um, from the school for months. Like, where's his brother at? I ain't seen him in months. And then he pops up on Facebook in a picture with a sister five months later. Mm -hmm. And the sister's calling you for counsel. What you calling me for? It's too late. It's too late. I, she, I don't even, I, I don't even know you. You calling me because you know he came from where I was from. Right. Well, why did you seek counsel before that, before you let him move in? Right. No, 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 don't do that. <laughs> Seen a pretty face, nice backside, and that was it. Mm -hmm. all, all of the scriptures in, in, in your mind turned off. <laughs> Straight turned off until you scratch that itch. Now this ain't the one. Damn, the law. The law say I gotta stay with him now. Oh, uh, let me see counsel. <laughs> She's wicked. She's wicked, man. She won't do nothing. Well, you didn't prove the sister in the first place. Right. You didn't ask nobody what type of spirit this sister got in the first place. You wasn't worried about it then, because you sit in here, you hear the words of God, but you will not do them. Read on. For with their mouth, they shoot much love. Man, that was a good class. It was good precepts. Man, y'all be bringing it out on them streets. Mm -hmm. Videos is good. Mm -hmm. Your mouth, you show much love. Read on. But their heart goes after their covetousness. Their what? Their covetousness. Your heart, your mind goes after what you really want. You don't seek no counsel at all. And you end up destroying yourself. Got a long life of a wicked woman. Long life of a Negro man. Mm. All right. Re Reverse 32. 
And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song uh -huh. of one that have a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy word. So they say, man, I like the way you explained that, man. You broke it down. That was easy to be understood. I now understand. They hear those words. That's nice. Read on. But they do them not. You don't do nothing that the Bible tells you to do. It was easy to understand. Well, why did you apply it? I got caught up in temptation. I don't know. That's what it is. I know. Go to Proverbs 19. Hey, Olsen, can I yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Give me Jeremiah 44, verse 16. Give me that, because what the oh, officer is saying yeah, is yeah. true. Because we out here, what we do is teach you God's words, not our words. We out giving you counsel according to what God tells us. Right. Not what we say. We don't come up, hey, forget the Bible. Let's just <laughs> what we want to think. Yeah, it makes, it makes no sense. sense. We here doing God's work, and we about God's words. Read that. Start at 16. 44, 16. Jeremiah chapter 44 and verse 16. Yeah. As for the word that have that, that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, yeah. we will not hearken unto thee. What would they want to do? We will not hearken unto thee. Guess what? We give you God's words, and you don't want to listen. It's by your action. It's like, oh, yeah, I might, but guess what? It's going to tell you the next verse. Read on. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing go forth out of our own mouth. Out of what? Out of our own mouth. Meaning your heart, your mouth. Whatever you say, whatever you think, hey, is what I, will, I want to do. That's what our people do today. We go and we counsel you say, listen, this is what God is telling you. This is what we know. Why? Because God is telling us. But in reality, no, I don't want to do it. You know, no, not take, today. I'll take my chances. I, I take my chances. I'll give you half of the story yeah. of what I'm really going, what I'm really through, going through, but, they but not the full. They don't even say that. They say, oh, you know what? Thank you, officer. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I needed yeah. this counsel. Yeah. They go out and do it. Ah, Ooh, but, uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. But the reason why we bring these out so we can learn from our forefathers' mistakes, apply these scriptures to our life. Uh, give me that in James real quick. Here we go. James chapter 1, verse 21. James 1, verse 21. James chapter 1 and verse 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and soup. soup Superfluity yeah. of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. What is it supposed to do? Which is able to save your soul. So when you get counsel from wise men that are using the scriptures, it ain't for to, to hold you back from something. We want to see you prosper. Where is that at? In, uh, give me, go to first John. I'll show you that. I'm gonna show you something. Uh, 3rd John chapter verse 2. Go to 3rd John verse 2. Count the counsel that you get from your leaders that God has set up. The captains, the officers, leaders of the people, wise and eloquent in their speech. It's not to hold you back from something. Read that in 3rd John verse 2. The third epistle of John verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. That's the thought we got. We, above all things, we want all of y'all to live your life to the fullest. You sisters, to find a husband and live your life joyfully. You brothers, find a wife and live joyfully with the wife of your youth. We want all of that to happen. Because that goes into building the nation, a righteous nation, back on the earth. Read on. That, that thou mayest prosper and be in health, uh -huh. even as thy soul prosper. As thy what? As thy soul prosper. So we give you scriptures in counsel so that not only you prosper in your marriage, in your life, in your, your occupation, it's that your soul prospers. That's what the main thing that we worried about is that your soul prospers because when your body turns back into the dust from which it came, your soul is going back to your maker. And you're going to have to answer for everything you've done in your body. So if you go and make a move and don't seek counsel and it ends up destroying you, when your soul goes back to God, it's going to ask you, well, why did you use the leaders I set up? 
They was the mouthpiece of me that I set up to feed you with wisdom and understanding. Knowledge and understanding. But you didn't use it. You wanted to do your own thing. All right, bro. I got an own thing for you. Poof, be gone, nigga. All right, uh, go to Proverbs now. Go back to Proverbs 19 and 20. Proverbs 19 and 20. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 20. Hear counsel. What's the Bible say? Hear counsel. Hear counsel. Read on. And receive instruction. You got to hear the counsel and receive the instructions that's being given to you in that counsel. Not hear it and let it go in one ear and out the other. Then you get home and you forget the daggone counsel that was given to you. And you make the mistake that we was just counseling you about. Hear the counsel. Read on. And receive instruction uh -huh. that thou mayest be wise. That you may be what? That thou mayest be wise. So God is instructing his people to seek counsel so you can be wise. In your decisions that you make going forward. Wisdom. Be wise in what you do. Read on. That thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. So you can live out your life joyfully in your latter end. You don't make a decision that you got to pay for for the rest of your life. I.e. baby daddies and baby mamas. I.e. clinics got the pills for the rest of my life. I eat this, I shouldn't have been doing that. Now I'm crippled in my right leg. So you don't have to live out the rest of your days in misery. Hear counsel that you may be wise. Go to uh, Proverbs 11 and 14. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 14. Where no counsel is. Where no what? Where no counsel is. Well, if you don't sit down and talk to somebody who got some wisdom according to the scriptures. Where no counsel is. Read on. The people fall. The people what? The people fall. The people are destroyed. If, we, if our people really want to change, all they have to do is come in here and seek the counsel of the Lord from the Israelites. Right. Things would change overnight. But we got so many people that are stuck in their own ways. I'm this, I'm that. I know this, I know that. I got my own way of doing things. So I'm going to do me, you do you, and we see how it work out in the end. Nah. Nah. Don't work like it. Read it again. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. Uh -huh. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. But in the what? But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Why is it safety in the multitude of counselors? Can a brother explain it to me? Make it, make it, make it plain to me. For, for somebody that been living, doing their own thing, trailblazing their own path out there in the world, they've been on their own since they was 18. Can't nobody tell me what to do now. Oh, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Brother Daniel, what, what is the... The safety in the multitude of counselors. Why? Um, Alright, like if you look into a lot of... Get microphones. I want all the people on the earth to hear you when we put this on YouTube. Like when you look into a lot of the uh, historic movies, when you have uh, rulers, they have a lot of counselors. Mm -hmm. People that they speak with on how they run their nation. Mm -hmm. So, when they make the decisions and pass certain laws, they uh, can be without a shadow of a doubt know that they're doing the right thing. Okay, okay. I like it. any other brother wanna wanna expound on that? Uh I got the same four hands. I was, oh Naji with an eye. <laughs> That's an inside joke, me and him What what you got brother? Why? Why is it safety in the multitudes of counselors? Give him the mic. Give me my mic. Hold on, hold on with a mic microphone brother. Because it's more than one brain being used. Oh, there we go. I like that. I like it. Good answer. It's more than one brain being used. Uh, Brother Judah, let's get you first. It's more than one brain being used. Because it's different point of views to expound from. There we go. It's different points of views. Different points of views. Now, And guess what? Those ain't points of views from who? But damn, Wendy Williams and Oprah and Steve Harvey. No, no, it ain't them points of views. It's who? Wise man that God is dealing with. 
Because in even with our prophets, like we read uh, last week, some things he showed to Daniel that he didn't show to Ezra. Some things he showed to Ezra, he didn't show to Daniel. Some things Ezekiel saw, some things Jeremiah saw. And what happens is we read all of those prophets and we put it together for our nation to come back in the bed to be built up as Israel. So we can go back home. Same thing with you. Different counselors, a multitude of counselors, all reading from the same scripture, all wise men. They see different points of view, different brains. And you know how, how the easy way to put that? You ever been talking to somebody and you, you get in counsel, but you don't call it counsel in your, in your mind. This is what you say. I want to know what you think. And you go to them, and then the other person says something. It's like, damn, I never thought of that. That's the multitude of counselors. That's how you do it in your everyday life, just making it plain to you. So read that again, Proverbs 11 and 14. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. Uh -huh. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. There is safety. Go to the book of, I think it is, let me see, I think it's Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9. Two are better than one. How many? Two are better than one. For what reason? Because they have a good reward for their labor. Read on. For if they fall. If they stumble. Read on. The one will lift up his fellows. Uh-huh. But woe to him that is alone. They counsel with himself in his own mind. Because our minds is on. You know, our, our thoughts are limited a lot of the times, our thoughts are limited to the life that we have lived. Like for a lot of us, you know, ain't none of us in here grew up with a bunch of money. So when it comes to ideas for business or how to maneuver in and out and not get taxes here, not get this by the government, that, we don't have that knowledge. We would have to seek somebody that has came from that lifestyle that knows about that thing that can open up a what this a door that we never knew existed. You can't do it on your own. That's why you gotta seek counsel. Read it. Is that it on that? Uh, read verse. Yeah. Read on. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he have not another to help him up. Because mm, he ain't got nobody to counsel with. So let's go back to Proverbs 11 and 14 again. Proverbs 11 and 14. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. They but, fall because there's nobody to help them. He got nobody to counsel with. Read on. But in the multitude of counselors... There is safety. In the multitude of counselors, there's safe, safety. Go to Proverbs 20, uh, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 18. Every purpose is established by counsel. It said every purpose. It didn't say some purposes, did it? Every purpose is established by counsel. Every purpose is established by counsel. Every purpose. Sisters, you want to get married? You single, looking for a brother? Well, how about you ask some Caesar sisters in here that are married how to look for a brother? What should I expect when I'm married? From what I know, that ain't happening in here. Then on the back end, what, what we got to do? We got to counsel your problems now. Because you would know how to handle those problems already if you just sought out the wise of the sisters. Hmm. Read that again. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 18. Every purpose is established by counsel. Every purpose is established by counsel. Is that the only place? Uh, Sirach 37, 16. Let's see if, it, if God just said it one time. Because a lot of times we like to think, you know, when we talk, he only said it to me one time. I didn't know he really meant it. <laughs> so God repeats himself over and over again, different ways to let you know he means what he say. Sirach 37, 16. Sirach chapter 37 and verse 16. 
Let reason go before every enterprise. Hold on. What what is the word that Solomon used in Proverbs? What did he use? He we see it says let reason go. I need somebody to raise their hand. Let me know. Seven. What is it? Purpose. Purpose. Read it again. So Rock chapter 37 and verse 16. Let reason go before every enterprise. Every purpose. Read on. And counsel before every action. And what? And counsel before every action. I'm just telling you, thus saith the Lord. I'm just telling you, thus saith the Lord. You can apply this to your life and live and, and be, what does it say? And, and be wise in thy latter end. Or you can do your own thing and keep going up and down in your daggone life until you die. Or Christ come back. All right, so let's go back to. Um, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Read verse 14, also. It's, this, it's a rock. this is why 16 says, Let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. Read verse 14. Sirach so chapter 37 and verse 14. Uh -huh. For a man's mind is sometime one to tell him more than seven watchmen. God says, A man's mind. Wants to tell him more things than a seven watchman. Right. What's a watchman, brothers? Josh said. Josh said, what is a watchman? A watchman is like... Where's your mic? Where's your mic? Just leave it on you. Uh, a watchman is uh, sometimes during the old time for wars. They will be watching to see who's coming. Who's coming. Right. Okay. So, that, that man, right? Where's the watchman that compared to the man? Where's he at? The watchman is in the tower, right? Yes, sir. Can that man see the same view as the watchman up there? Right. No, sir. No. But God said, read it again. For a man's mind. A man's mind. Is sometimes want to tell him more than seven watchmen. A man's mind or a sister's mind. Mm -hmm. Sometimes tell him, hey, don't listen to them. Yeah. You can you can go and, and, and be good. You don't got to worry about nothing. Mm -hmm. Read on. That sit above in a high tower. That's why in verse 16, it said, Let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. Exactly right. Exactly right. Because God has set up people that can see things you can't see. He's dealing with people different than he's dealing with you. Exactly. Yeah, he's called you in here, but every single one of us got a, a different level of wisdom. So use that. Tap into that thing. There's some scriptures on that thing. It's, it's probably in answer right there. So let's go back to uh, uh, Proverbs again. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. Every purpose is established by counsel and with good advice. With what? And with good advice. With good advice. That's the thing. It said good, good. advice. Some of y'all take Bad advice. <laughs> Horrible advice. And I, I'll tell you who you take it from. Go to Sirach 19 and 22. <laughs> this is who you take it from. Sirach chapter 19 and verse 22. The knowledge of wickedness is what? The what? The knowledge of wickedness. The knowledge of wickedness. Knowing how to, knowing how to bag it up, cook it up, slice it up. Turn a dollar, flip a eight ball, whatever. The knowledge of wickedness. Read on. It's not wisdom. It's not wisdom. No, 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 no. Ain't no, ain't no damn uh, wise, smart drug dealers on the face of the earth. <laughs> no matter how much they know how to chop it up, cut it up, no, you done. You're killing your people. <laughs> Read on. The knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom. Neither at any time the counsel the what the counsel uh -huh. of sinners prudence oh the counsel of who sinners prudence the counsel the word prudence means wise name some people that are sinners that our people get counseled from and I ain't talking about famous people no this is a personal question name let's see what you got who your parents. Anybody else got anybody, anything else? Brother Lucius? From grandma. From your grandma? 
Gerald Hill? Your brother. Your brother? Your wicked ass auntie that got three baby daddies? That's who you get counsel from. Cause you know that the wise man are gonna tell you, no, nah, no, nope, don't do that. Mm -mm. How long you been in the truth? No, nah, you're not ready. Right. Right. Wasn't you the one just a few weeks ago you came up here and was telling me you, you had a, a grudge against somebody? No, you gotta work on yourself, sister. No, you gotta work on yourself, brother. Nah, you won't come to us and get that because you know we'll shut it down. You go to your, your auntie, you go to your brother, you go to your cousin, you go to your friend that you knew in high school you still keep in contact with every once in a while. God said, neither at any time. So there's no counsel, no wisdom ever that somebody outside of these scriptures can give you that can make some sense. Right. That's right. Even if it does work out for you, you've got to turn that thing around and make it be the worst thing that ever happened to you. Go ahead. I got an example. I'm going to show you in the scriptures. We have an example from our forefather. Give me first Kings. Oh, no, no, no. We ain't going there yet. No? No, not yet. Right. We ain't going there yet. Not yet. So let's go back. So you ain't supposed to get counsel from wicked ass family members. You ain't supposed to get counsel from your homeboys. You ain't supposed to get counsel from your co-workers you've been working with a long time. You ain't supposed to get counsel from entertainers. They all sinners. I'm going to read that thing again. I like it. The knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom. You know how to keep from being getting caught uh, burning DVDs and selling them on the side. That ain't wisdom. <laughs> Neither at any time the counsel of sinners, all those who don't keep the commandments, prudence. It ain't wisdom at all. Go back to uh, Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs chapter. Uh, no, no, let's stay in Sirach. Sirach 30, 21. Sirach chapter 30 and verse 21. This is going with what we pulled earlier. Sirach 37, 16, 14. Go ahead. Give not over thy mind to heaviness, uh -huh. and afflict not thyself in thine own counsel. The Bible says, afflict not thyself in thy own counsel. You should not be going back and forth in your own mind. Is this a good decision? Is this not a good decision? What should I do? What should I not do? Anybody ever got a headache from thinking too hard before? <laughs> Show of hands. I done did that. I think like, damn, man, let me just relax. That goes into not subduing your own understanding. Not subduing your own understanding, right. The scripture says, Give not thy mind to heaviness and afflict not thyself in thine own counsel. Seek out that wise brother, that wise sister that knows these scriptures. They can give you some good advice. Right? Um, let's see, where else after that? Go to, uh, okay, uh, Proverbs 16, 18. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction. What does? Pride goeth before destruction. So the only reason that somebody wouldn't seek counsel from somebody else, no matter what age they are, as long as they got the wisdom of God, is because they're dealing with what? Pride, Pride goeth before destruction. Pride. That's what keeps us from going to each other asking counsel. It's pride. You don't want nobody to tell you what to do because I'm older than you. I don't live. I got different experiences that you ain't experienced yet, young brother. That's pride. Cause how old was Jesus when he started his ministry? How old was he, brothers? Does any brother in here know about show of hand? Oh, I forgot your name from yesterday. It's some G. Yeah, yeah. You got to stand up. I can't pronounce it right now. How old was he? Let me know, brother. Give him a microphone. I want the young brother, let's see if he knows how old Jesus was. He was, he was 12. Oh, well, that's when we first read about him starting. That's not quite, that, that's, that's half right. When we first read about him teaching, that was at 12, but how old was he? Uh, is that, who is that? I can't see his face. Okay, there we go. Go ahead, Jacob. 32. 32. No, let's go to him. Matthew, let's go to the book of Matthew. Uh, now here we go. Luke 
chapter 3, verse 23. Let's find out how old Jesus was when he started. Let you know that counsel and wisdom can come from any brother or sister in here as long as they are learned in the scriptures of God. Luke chapter 3 and verse 23. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. How old? 30 years of age. Uh -huh. Being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. So uh, he started his teaching, his preaching, telling people to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand at the age of 30 years old. That's why when he stepped on the scene, the Pharisees and the Sadducees like, you ain't 50 years old yet? Young man, you can't be telling, you can't come up in here changing things. Who are you? They don't mean nothing in the eyesight of God. So let's go back to that again. Proverbs 16 and 18. Proverbs 16 and verse 18. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18. Pride goes before destruction, and in haughty spirit before a fall. A haughty spirit, meaning a hard-headed person. Just won't. It's just your way or the highway. That's what it means to be a haughty spirit. People telling you, no, there's danger around that corner, man. I'm going to go see for myself. <laughs> All right. And poof. That's a haughty spirit. Uh, go to Sirach 324. Sirach. Chapter 3, verse 24. Pull up uh, New York too. Let's make so sure you stay tuned with that. Chapter 3 and verse 24. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Their own many. So I know some of this might be hitting one or two. I mean, oh, he's talking to me. Oh, them scriptures fit me. It's, it ain't just you. It's a bunch of you out there. Deceived by your own vain opinion. It's a bunch of you. Read on. And an evil suspicion have overthrown their judgment. It's something that just didn't seem right with you, and it overthrew your judgment. You should have did this, but you in your own mind and your own thoughts, mm, I ain't going to do what's right. I'm going to do what I think is right. Many are deceived by their own judgment. Go to Sirach chapter 8, verse 8. Sirach chapter 8 and verse 8. Despise not the discourse of the wise. What's another way to say discourse, brothers? Counsel. Despise not the counsel of the wise. Those that know the what, brothers? What makes us wise? Scriptures, y'all. Second Timothy 3.15. Remember the precepts. Y'all should write, the, besides 2 Timothy 3.15, y'all should write, this makes us wise. In your, in your notes, this makes us wise. All right, along with keeping the commandments. Because you can know a bunch of scriptures and not have no daggone wisdom, because you ain't keeping no what behind it? Commandments. They go hand in hand. Read that again in Sirach 8 and 8. Sirach chapter 8 and verse 8. Despise not the discourse of the wise, mm -hmm. but acquaint thyself with their proverbs. Uh -huh. For of them thou shalt learn instruction. You're gonna learn instruction. Read on. And how to serve great men with ease. Read on. Miss not the discourse of the elders, for they also learn of their fathers. Every one of us up here done learn from people that was here before us. We learn from Bishop. We learn from uh, uh, Bishop Kadai. We learn from Deacon Yawasak. We learn from Captain Ramya, Captain Kabash. We learn from them. That's why God says, don't miss that discourse they give it to you. Read on. And of them thou shalt learn understanding. And give answer as need require it. Go to Sirach 32, 18. Sirach chapter 32 and verse 18. A man of counsel will be considerate. A man of what? A man of counsel will be considerate. Y'all see how much the, the Lord keeps talking about counsel? He put leaders here. He put brothers here with some wisdom of the scriptures to help you out in your journey in this life. 
Because far too long we was growing up, we didn't know what to really do. A lot of us didn't grow up with fathers in the household. Right. So we don't know how to be men. A lot of us grow up with ratchet mamas. We don't know how to be daughters of Sarah. So what happens is, a man who comes in here to learn how to repent ain't seek no counsel on how he should uh, handle himself with a woman. You go in there treating her the same way that you was raised. And sisters, you uh, you go with that man that come in here trying to learn the way you learn your mama taught you, the same way you treat them, your husband. And that's how you got problems. That's how you got troubles in the flesh all the daggone time. Every damn month you got troubles in the flesh. <laughs> so, hey, just do what God says. A man of counsel will be considerate. Read on. But a strange and proud man uh -huh. is not daunted with fear. A strange and a proud man ain't daunted with fear. You don't care. You take your chances that whatever happens, happens. You ain't daunted with fear. Read on. Even when of himself he have done without counsel. Even in his own self. He ain't, he ain't scared. He ain't sought nobody's help. He know he's in a bad situation. He's going to do what he wants to. Read on. Do nothing without advice. What's that say? Do nothing without advice. Man, this Bible is very redundant. Bishop could not say it all the time. The Bible is very, very redundant. So it's the same thing over and over again. Do nothing without advice. Read on. And when thou hast once done, repent not. So once you get some advice on that thing, go full speed ahead on that because you don't counsel with people with different right. situations, different point of view. So if you're going and doing that and something pop up, it's like, oh, he said that was going to happen. And you prepare for it. It ain't like, oh, damn, I didn't know that was going to happen. What do I do now? And you just stay stuck, frozen. I don't know which way to go. I don't know what else to do. You stay stuck, marching around the same tree, never moving forward. Read on. Do nothing without advice. And when thou hast once done, repent not. Read on. Go not in a way wherein thou mayest fall. You see, God just explained seek counsel three different ways. In verse uh, 18, he said, a man of counsel is considerate. Verse 19 said, do nothing without advice. Verse 20, he said, go not in a way wherein thou mayest fall. The only way you may go into a way where you don't know what's going to happen, you might stumble, is if you ain't sought out what, brothers? Counsel. Most high just, he said the same thing. Man, that's, that's why the Bible says that wisdom belongeth unto God. Same situation, three different ways he just explained it. Go not in a way wherein thou mayest fall. Read on. And stumble not among the stones. Because you done made bad decisions and you're stumbling as you go through it. Stumbling. Uh, go to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 18 again. It was a, it's a good point in there that we pulled out. I'm going to pull it out again. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 18. Every purpose is established by counsel. And with good advice, make war. What? In, with what? And with good advice, make war. Good advice. Well, you might not know who the, who good advice might come from. God didn't leave no gray areas for that. Now let's go back to uh, Sirach 37. And 7. God didn't leave no gray areas for that. Because he says, see, good advice. And he gives you the different kind of spirits that you seek counsel from that you may see. And you know what, well, no, that ain't good advice. That's not a counselor for me. Sirach 37 and 7. Sirach chapter 37 and verse 7. Every counselor extolleth counsel. I can counsel? Yeah, come here, break your problems over here, man. I, I done helped plenty of people before. I got the answers, what you want? Read on. But there is some that counsel it for himself. But you could be getting set up. You could be getting set up. Read on. Beware of a counselor uh -huh. and know before what need he has. That means you got to know who you're talking to. Know that person. You can't just be counseling with strangers. I'm not going to counsel about money with somebody I know is a habitual thief. That's stupid. Is Very bad counsel. Read on. 
for he will counsel for himself, uh -huh. lest he cast the lot upon thee. Read on. And say unto thee, the way is good. And afterward, he stand on the other side to see what shall befall thee. Yeah, go on over, man. I got a uh, two for one sale in the store. <laughs> and he know damn well they selling drugs out the back. And he done seen the cops sitting around in the corner of the SWAT team <laughs> getting ready to run in there. And he looking at you. Don't do that. Read on. Verse 10. Consult not with one that suspecteth thee. Uh huh. And hide thy counsel from such as envy thee. Hide thy counsel from one that such as envy thee. Don't get. Hey, I know it's with y'all, y'all women. Y'all did this in the world. Y'all know daggone world, y'all best friend really be hating on you on the low. Right. And you get all your daggone counsel from her on the phone. <laughs> You know damn well they, they don't like you for real. Bring it out. But you get counsel from them. God says, hide thy counsel from such as envy thee. Read on. Neither consult with a woman touching her of whom she is jealous. Don't, don't do that. God knows, God knows how you women are. Be straight up jealous of each other. Can't never keep them in. Talking to each other about each uh, uh, relationships. You guys don't know. I'm gonna pull another scripture. Whenever you done with that. All right, let's let's read on this. <laughs> Sirach chapter thirty-seven, verse eleven. Neither consult with a woman touching her of whom she is jealous. And it could be anything she could be jealous of you about that you got a good righteous man. Mm -hmm. She ain't gonna let you know that. Mm. She jealous of the car you drive. She jealous of your natural hair. She jealous that you look modest. It could be anything. She ain't gonna tell you. You'll hear it in a speech, though. Why you do that? She's jealous. Because they're not asking for, uh, uh, from a standpoint of, they trying to repent. They ask it from a standpoint of, I don't like what you really do. But you don't pick up on the science. Read on. Neither with a coward in matters of war. Read on. Nor with a merchant concerning exchange. But they're always cheating. Read on. Nor with a buyer of selling. Mm -hmm. Nor because with because he's gonna try to get the lowest price. Read on. Nor with an envious man of thankfulness. Oh, oh a hater. <laughs> don't counsel with a hater. He hate on everything. <laughs> don't don't He's just he's a uh, what's that dude's name in uh, Boondocks? Uh, Uncle Ruckus. He's Uncle Ruckus in the flesh. <laughs> hate all niggas. And <laughs> hey, you counsel with him. Don't do that. Read on. Nor with an unmerciful man touching kindness. Mm, we got some people that don't show no mercy to nobody. You know who they are. <laughs> Talking to somebody that still got damn hatred for your uh, uncle that died 25 years ago. She still referred to him as that nigga. <laughs> no mercy at all. Ready to fight at a drop of a dime. But you counsel with him. Concerning mercy. Read on. Nor with the slothful for any work, nor with an hiring for a year of finishing work, uh -huh. nor with an idle servant of much business. Read on. Hearken not unto these in any matter of counsel. Read that part again. Hearken not unto these in any matter of counsel. God says when you are looking for good advice, good counsel, those that fall into this criteria, God says, consult not with them in any matter of counsel. God didn't leave no gray areas for you. No matter of counsel when it comes to those. Read on. Verse 12. But be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep. Go ahead. Keep the what? Thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. Because with him keeping the commandments of the Lord, God is going to impart on him what, brothers? Wisdom. Hey, okay, I'm glad. All right. Light bulbs is on. All praises. Go ahead, officer. Hey, let me get us Sirach 6 and 6. The most I said, uh, beware of a counselor. But he also said this. Sirach 66, read that. Sirach 
chapter 6 and verse 6. Uh -huh. Be in peace with many. Be at peace with many, right? Everybody have peace with each other. But watch this. Nevertheless, uh -huh. have but one counselor. Have what? But have have but one counselor. Mosan said, have that one person who you counsel with. Who you know, okay, this brother, uh, he, he, he's not a uh, um, right. neither consult with the woman, touch her whom she is jealous. Mm -hmm. He's not a coward, he's not a, you know what I'm saying? All those attributes right. that, that, that a counselor is supposed to not have, we know, okay, this is the person I'm gonna counsel with. Mm -hmm. The most I says have one counselor. We don't. Of a thousand. So that's a, that's a requirement. That, that's not like a requirement to me. Have a counselor of 1,000. Mm -hmm. Have that one person that you trust, who you know, okay, they, 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 get, they got understanding, they got wisdom, right. and counsel with that person. Yep. That go for sisters and brothers. Yep. Yep. Cause you can get, you can get uh, a counselor from a multitude of counselors and all that damn counsel be wrong. Yep. But you can have that one that's making sense out of everything that you understand. And you know it's wise and good counsel because they in the scriptures. Right? Uh, so let's go back to Sirach 37 and, and 12 again. Sirach chapter 37 and verse 12. Okay, the class for some of you that just walked in is seek counsel or destroy thyself. Read on. But be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. Uh huh. Whose mind is according to thy mind, Read on. and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. Read on. And let the counsel of thine own heart stand, for there is no man more faithful unto thee than it. So once you get that counsel, trust in that. Trust in that counsel that you have gotten from the leaders, from that one person that you trust in. Let that counsel stand so you don't go on hesitant and not when you and when you hesitate you don't fully uh what's that word i want to say uh break out all that you could from that council because you was doubting from the get-go really, uh, uh, you was doubting so you never got to see that flourish into what that good council could have been because you doubt it and that's why it says in verse 14 Sirach chapter 37 and verse 14. For a man's mind is sometimes wont to tell him more than seven watchmen mm -hmm. that sit above in a high tower. That's why you need counsel. That's why you need counsel and to trust in that once you make that step forward. Because it's a lot of different things that will come into your mind. You can watch something on TV, watch the damn movie. Now you think that might happen. You might have a hell of an imagination. I don't know me, but I was, I got imagination. Um, when I was younger, I'd be in my granny's house, it'd be at night. I'd go downstairs and get some uh, some juice out the refrigerator. And uh, I'd be coming back up the steps, it'd be raining. It'd be thundering and lightning. I used to be scared of thunder and lightning when I was younger. I used to think walking up them downs, I hit the first step and the second step, and in my mind, for some reason, I just think Freddy Krueger gonna come out of the damn basement. I used to think it for some reason. That's, That's just my mind. And then you hear me <laughs> running up the steps. Cause my mind would tell me something back there. <laughs> something behind me, something coming. But that's why we need counsel, because our minds will, will interject things that... Your mind never stops working. Never stops working. That's why you got dreams. Everybody, your mind's working while you sleep. Uh, read on, verse 15. Sirach chapter 37 and verse 15. And above all this, pray to the Most High, that He will direct thy way in truth. And all above all of that, even though you're getting counsel from some brothers here, you know they do the God's dealing with them. They got some wisdom. They in the scriptures. Above all of that, you ask, Lord, show me the way. Direct my steps, Lord. Psalms 119, 133. Psalms chapter 119, verse 133. Order my steps in thy word. And let what? Order my steps in thy word, uh -huh. and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Order thy steps. The Lord will order thy steps 
That's why I said it's a rock above all that. Once you get that counsel, ask the Lord. Lord, am I doing what's right? And he's going to do what? Order thy steps. Because the scriptures say, with a man's way please the Lord, he make even his enemies to be at peace with him. So whatever endeavor you're going on after you sought that counsel, send up prayers and trust in that thing that the Lord is leading you right. Don't doubt in your mind. All right, go to uh, 1 Kings. Now we're going to 1 Kings 12. 1 Kings 12, I'm going to show you. Here's an example of... Somebody, they won't listen. Yeah, 1 Kings 12, 6. Get straight to the point. 1 Kings chapter 12 and verse 6. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father. Hold on, read that part against red. Read it again. 1 Kings chapter 12 and verse 6. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his okay, father. so what do we see going on right there between Zephaniah, Brother Zephaniah, let's see what you got. Let's see if anybody picked up on it. Give me the microphone. So, um, it's saying that King Solomon, even though he was wise, he still had counselors. Even though King Solomon was wise, he had counselors. Let's show you how wise King Solomon was. Uh, go back 1 Kings chapter 4 and uh, verse 30, let's start at verse uh, 29. 1 Kings chapter 4 and verse 29. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding. He gave him what? Wisdom and understanding. Uh -huh. Exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. Read on. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country uh -huh. and all the wisdom of Egypt. So so all the Egyptians didn't have no kind of wisdom on God. I mean on, on Solomon at all. Couldn't touch it. Read on. For he was wiser than all men, uh -huh. than Ethan the Azurite, and Haman the Charcoal and, and Darda the sons of Mahal. And his fame was in all nations round about. Read on. And he spake 3,000 proverbs. And and he spake of trees. Sorry. And he spake 3,000 proverbs. And his songs were 8,005. Read on. And he spake of trees. And from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall, he spake also of beasts and of fowl and of creeping things and of fishes. And they came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. So if King Solomon is the wisest man to ever walk the face of the earth besides Jesus the Christ and he had counselors and sought counselors, should we seek counsel also, brothers? Yes, sir. Hey, there's Proverbs in here that none of us can break down and understand, but they made perfect sense to Solomon. Because his wisdom was on a, another level. God was dealing with him on a, another level. So let's go back to 1 Kings 12 again. And let's read verse 6. 1 Kings chapter 12 and verse 6. And King Rehoboam consulted with old men, with the old men that stood before Solomon, his father, while he yet lived, and said, how do ye advise that I may answer this people? He said, how do you what? How do ye advise that I may answer this people? How do you advise that I may answer this people? Advise, counsel. How should I counsel these people? Read on. And they spake unto him. So the old man great gave him some wise counsel. Read on. And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, and will serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them. Then will they be thy servants forever. But what did he do? But he forsook the counsel of the old men. He forsook the counsel of the wise man that was given uh, counsel to his wise father, Solomon. Read on. Which they had given him, and consulted with the young men. With the who? With the young men. He consulted with his homies. 
with his boys, those he grew up around, those he made music with, those that he uh, he dropped a hot 16, those that he played football with, those he been knowing for a long time, those he used to pull a caper with back in the day that saved his life once or twice. Mm -hmm. That's my boy. I can't, it's my boy, what I'm supposed to do? Me and him got history. Mm -hmm. That's what we say. But he forsook the counsel of the old man. Read on. And consulted with the young men that were grown up with him. Same thing we do today. Read on. And which stood before him. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye that we may answer this piece? So let's see what the young, dumb knucklehead said. Who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus, thus shalt thou speak unto this people that speak unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shall I say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. And now, whereas my father did lay you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father hath chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So we see this is terrible counsel. <laughs> Absolutely terrible counsel for some young knuckleheads that ain't got no wisdom. Now we know this was a part of God's plan to do what he did between the northern and southern kingdom. We see, we can pull extract from the scripture. When you get bad counsel, what happens? It ends up doing this. Verse 16. First Kings chapter 12 and verse 16. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, now see to thine own house. David, so Israel departed unto their tents. Jump down to verse 19. Verse 19. So Israel rebelled against the house of David. So we understand that when you take bad counsel, it can destroy everything around you. Your decisions don't only affect you. It affects your wife. It affects your husband. It affects your kids. It affects your mamas, your daddies. That's why God says seek counsel to make sure you're doing the right thing because it ain't just you that's going to get caught up in it. Everybody that is around you gets caught up in that web of destruction. Go to Hebrews. I think Romans 15 and 4 and then we'll go to Hebrews. These are the last few scriptures here. Romans 15 and 4. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For wait, what? wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Before we... Let's go to Tobit. Uh, Tobit 2. I got three more for you. Is it 2? Tobit 4, 18. Tobit chapter 4 and verse 18. Acts counsel of all that are wise. Do what? Acts counsel of all that are wise. God is telling you, ask counsels. Counsel of all that are wise. Not from your knuckle-headed ass homeboys. Not from your wicked mamas, your wicked aunties that don't know nothing about God at all, but you want counsel from them on how to live your godly life. Crazy. God says, ask counsel of all that are wise. Read on. And despise not any counsel that is profitable. That's the key. What did we just read Rehoboam did? He despised counsel that was what? That was profitable. That can't be our spirit that we have in here now. You know daggone well that's the right thing to do. It may be a little hard to get to that end place that you asked counsel for and they gave you an answer you really wasn't expecting, but it's profitable for you in the end. That comes with then doing what? We have to subdue our own thoughts, be transformed in the renewing of our minds. Read on. Verse 19. Bless the Lord thy God always. And desire of him that thy ways may be directed. Uh -huh. And that all thy paths and counsels may prosper. That all thy paths and thy counsels may prosper. Read on. 
for every nation have not counseled. Listen to this, what Tobit, God is speaking through Tobit, every nation ain't got the same counsel you got. Every nation ain't got forefathers that was the prophets of God, that God spoke directly to, tell my people this. This is how they should live. This is gonna keep them out of trouble. This is how they're gonna maneuver amongst their enemies. Every nation don't have that counsel. Read on. For every nation have not counsel, but the Lord himself giveth all good things. Read on. And he humbleth whom he will, as he will. So you go outside of that counsel that God has given to you as a nation, he gonna humble you as he will. It could be any, it could be death. Like I gave some examples there. It could be death. It could be that, that limp in your leg for the rest of your life. You can take them pills. You can get that shot. You could be caught up with a wicked ass husband, a wicked wife. He gonna humble you however he will until you learn, let me seek some counsel. Let me just, I'm not right all the time. Let me just subdue my own thoughts. Do what God said to read on. Now therefore, my son, remember my commandments. Neither let them be put out of thy mind. Keep this always in your mind. Counsel. Now go to Romans 15 and 4. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So I hope, I pray to the Most High that y'all that heard these scriptures today, that you actually apply them and learn from them. Because we've all been in some situations to where we've made bad decisions and we should have sought some counsel from somebody who might have knew something different, a different point of view. God was dealing with him in somewhat a different experience that we could have took on ourselves. What was that thing my daddy used to tell me? Oh, my daddy used to tell me all the time, you better learn from other people's mistakes because you may not live long enough to make them all yourself. What was he telling me to do? He, did, he, he was quoting his worldly thing, but now I understand he was telling me, seek counsel. Learn from what other people done done. Read that again. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, uh -huh. that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Go to Hebrews now. Let's go to Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13, verse 7. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 7. Remember them which have the rule over you. So whenever you are embarking on what should I do, I am kind of don't really know what to do. God says remember them that he set up as what? Leaders over you. Whether it be here, whether it be Orlando, if we, if we ain't got the knowledge and the wisdom of that certain situation that you might be in, guess what? We can reach out. We got a chain of command. Where your answer is going to get answered to the best. Because we want to see what? What the scriptures say? Your soul prosper. So we're going to get you the best advice, the best counsel we possibly can. We don't. Who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow. Considering the end of their conversation. Considering the end of those that have the rule over you, their conversation, their conduct. How do they live their life? Are they in the scriptures? Yeah, let me consider that. Let me counsel. Let me go seek that wisdom. Verse 17. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. For they watch for your soul. So the reason that we are going over a council class is because we watch it out for your soul. We don't want none of you sisters to marry a brother that you don't know really what's going on with him. Like we do up here. Because we know things you don't know and there's some things they ain't going to tell you until you sign your name on there and damn, you're stuck. Yep. <laughs> Same thing you brothers with the sisters. <coughs> Because we're watching out for your souls. We want to see your soul prosper. Read on. As they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. How will we be doing it with joy and not with grief? Joy is you saw counsel, something happened, and you came back and told us what happened after we gave you the counsel. What's grief? You done went out there and did something on your own. Now you're coming back seeking help. Now what the hell? Who told you to do that? Who told you that? 
Go Batty. Oh, sheesh. Yeah, brothers, let's have a meeting about this brother here and sister. We gotta help him out of this situation now. That's grief. Read on. And not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. That's unprofitable for you because behind that, guess what's coming for you? Correction. You're going to get a few blast scriptures in there. Your feelings might get hurt. We ain't trying to hurt your feelings, but we got to let you understand that that ain't the right way to do it. Turn it around, seek counsel, then go and do what you need to do. Apply that to your life. Don't go pulling the, what they say? Let me get this saying right. The carriage before the horse. Is that right? They say that, brothers? Yeah, that's true. Okay. <laughs> Don't pull the, the baby carriage before the baby. Okay, I'm trying to get one of these things right. <laughs> okay, I got it right. Because it's unprofitable for you. Like we read, we want your soul to prosper, so seek counsel as thus saith the Lord. All right? Any brothers got any questions about the scriptures we went over today? In all of our enterprises, God says to seek what, brothers? Counsel. Seek what, sisters? Counsel. Counsel. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.